So on the desk right here, we have the 7980XE CPU from Intel. This is 18 cores, 36 threads. There's so many cores and threads on this thing, in fact, that Afterburner, a software for monitoring uh, your CPU utilization and GPU utilization in games, can't even stretch out that many threads. It can only recognize up to 32 threads. So when it came to monitoring games and doing literally so many things at once, this CPU was too much for even the software to handle. But in today's video, we're gonna take a look at why someone would even want to buy something like the i9-7980XE and comparing it a little bit against the i7-8700K, for example, which does have less cores, less threads, and does have higher clock speeds and costs considerably less. I mean, this thing comes in at around 2,000 US dollars, or if you're in Australia, 2,700 AUD, and see just how much it takes to stress this CPU out. But before we get on to the making of this gorgeous build, I'd like to give a big thanks to Intel for sponsoring out today's video. Welcome back to Tech Yesterday, and here we have the 18 core installed on an X299 Tai Chi motherboard from ASRock. Now, straight away with something like this, you'll have to get a good motherboard. Something like the Tai Chi will cost around $290. You're also gonna use a lot of memory, especially if you're video editing. Today, we're using 32 gigabytes of HyperX Predator memory. This stuff has tight timings at CL15 and XMP profiles at 2933 megahertz, which is so easy in the BIOS to lock in. Now, another thing you can do with this CPU is overclock it. So out of the box, it'll clock to 3.4 gigahertz automatically on all cores whilst you're doing a Cinebench run, for example, or if you're doing video editing, it's marked at 2.6 gigahertz, but that's because it carries the AVX instructions, which does churn out a lot of heat compared to traditional work where you don't use those AVX instructions. For instance, in video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro, you aren't using those instructions and it will juice about 400 watts from the wall, both in stress testing and when you're utilizing all those cores at four gigahertz. And I'm gonna say four gigahertz because that's the balance that I got here today. I managed to overclock this CPU with ease and we're using a 280 millimeter Cooler Master water cooler as well. And this keep the temperatures under control. We're only getting a maximum of 80 degrees. So it was handling everything absolutely fine. However, when it comes to games, it will fall slightly behind the 8700K when it comes to just gaming. For instance, CSGO, the frame rates were just a little bit behind. They were still very impressive on the 7980XE. Uh, moving over to PUBG and Final Fantasy 15 saw no difference since these games are frame capped. When it comes to streaming from the CPU, however, in X264, which a lot of people still love to do because apparently you get better image quality, especially when you lower the settings to either slow, medium, or fast, you did uh, pull ahead with the 7980XE. It just had so much more room to work with. Of course, it's got quad channel memory if you wanna utilize that too. Uh, if you've got other applications open at the same time, for example. Uh, but this is where the difference was made. You're getting really good image quality, very smooth gameplay. The uh, 0.1 and 1% lows, especially on the uh, medium and slow settings are still quite low, but these are very taxing settings. Uh, when it came to the fast setting, it did pull ahead of the 8700K, especially in CSGO, moving over to PUBG and Final Fantasy 15, didn't show a huge difference. Uh, but it does show the maximum potential of this CPU. Now, to make things even more ridiculous, I decided to uh, really stress this CPU. I put in Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, decided to mix some music, have a browser open, stream, and play a video game all at the same time, and everything was still holding up. So this thing, if you want to multitask like an absolute boss, and that's where this CPU will really excel. Now, another thing recently, which is very weird because I use Adobe Premiere Pro for editing videos, is it just got an update where it can now utilize all cores and all threads. So even up to an 18 core 36 threaded beast like this, the render times were absolutely insane. I can't stress how surprised I was. Uh, we're talking around seven minutes and 34 seconds 
versus 16 minutes and 59 seconds on the 8700K. So there's a massive difference. This is on a review that I would push out on the channel, which has a lot of transitions, a lot of after effects, and also a lot of text, scrolling, moving presets, and even color correction too. So it's a very heavy workload. And even of course the 1080 Ti is helping with that with CUDA acceleration. But it goes to show that Premiere Pro is still very CPU dependent, especially when it comes to the actual live work time, which will uh, utilize all those cores and threads now with the latest update. And in a nutshell, that's pretty much the Core i9 Extreme. If you need something that can do everything and you can utilize 18 cores and 36 threads, especially in the professional workspace with even some of the updates coming from Adobe themselves finally, then this thing will deliver of course, if you're going to spend a lot of money on a CPU like this, then I do highly recommend getting good gear to match. Get a nice case. We're using the H500P here. And when I did some temperature tests uh, with the thermal imaging camera, this case was absolutely fine. Also, the noise was really quiet. We've got good memory. We've got a very good motherboard with the X299 Taichi and also an EVGA 1080 Ti to boot. Uh, for the power supply, we're using an 850 watt gold rated power supply and that handled this uh, build absolutely fine. So again, the CPU itself juicing around 400 watts from the wall. When you're in games, it'll ju actually juice even less uh, because those cores are now not getting loaded as much. And even the 1080 Ti's power consumption really won't match. It actually balances out just a little over 400 watts in games too. So very potent, very huge. And again, a big thanks for Intel for sponsoring out this video. Although I don't get to keep this CPU, which I'm devastated about. I'd love to put this thing in my new rig, especially with that new update that changes pretty much the whole game when it comes to my workflow. And I do spend a lot of time in uh, Adobe Premiere and Adobe Creative Cloud, for example. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the 7980XE, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.